Dr. Lawan. Recording is in progress. Good evening, everyone. All the, participants, all the participants all over the world. My name is Ambassador Dr. Ayodele Idowu Falon Sholawa. I am the CEO of Mercy mm -hmm. of the Age Foundation. Tonight, I am the moderator of this program. And I pray that God Almighty will lead us as we go in Jesus' name. Mercy of God for the Age Foundation was founded in the year 2010. And we care for the elderly ones, 60 years and above. We do charitable services. We attend to them medically. And we do social services. Hello? Hello? We can hear you, we can hear you, please. Go ahead, just okay. go ahead, we can hear you. Okay. Tonight, we are going to, we are going to discuss the topic, NGO governance and networking. And we have some people in the house. We have Dr. Ambassador James. Mercy Obatu maybe as the facilitator. We also have Professor Ayamu Rabiu Olongewaju is the Professor Ayamu Olarewaju is the director of training. For mercy of God for the Age Foundation. Why? Dr. Ambassador James is the C is the president of WOP, World Humanity for Peace and Equity. I will also like to recognize. Dr. Oluremi Olutimo, the United States Secretary General, is here in our midst. I'd like to recognize Dr. Latif Mary Yusuf. I equally want to recognize Ambassador Williams. Andrew, our Zoom host, who is hosting us tonight. I recognize everyone here present who is participating in this program. I thank you all. And I say you are welcome to the program tonight. So for other introductions, I would like to call on Ambassador Dr. James to introduce some of the dignities that I may not be able to recognize on the platform. Please, over to you, sir. Ambassador oh, James. You, Ambassador. Yes, I'm here with you. Thank you. Um... Dr. Ambassador Dovulawa, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You have done justice to everything. You have introduced every one of us. Thank you so much. I would just like to say thank you to His Royal Highness, Honorable Ambassador 
Andrew Williams Jr., the president and chairperson of AIGA Network. So because of this opportunity we have today to be here for this training, my duties is Muga Foundation Program, the mercy of for the the message of God for the Age Foundation program. So I'm just here to facilitate. So I, officially as well, I want to welcome everyone that have joined us today. And mind you, there's going to be a pre presentation of certificate immediately after this training. I think uh, the link to that has to be dropped here for others to join us as we are running up this program for for their certificates. So thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Tonight, like I have said before, we are dealing with the topic. We are dealing with the topic NGO governance and networking. And it shall be taken by Dr. Ambassador Mercy James Obatumibi. Over to you, sir. So thank you and uh, welcome once again. She has rightly said, today we want to deal about uh, NGO governance and networking. As she has rightly said. So permit me to share my, my screen. Um, I'm using phone and that's going to be okay. Please, can you all see this? Can you all see yes, my screen, please? Yes, we see it. Yeah, we all can right. see it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, this is the table of contents of our program today. Uh, NGO governance. Here in stages, we have stages of development in non-governmental organizations. Uh, we have the non-structured group, the structured ones, the registered organizations, professional organizations, then the organization with a balanced division of power, an organization with horizontal or vertical structure, the characteristics of good governance, and the NGO networking. So thank you for joining us once again. Now we want to talk about the good governance, the good governance for NGO. Do not forget, NGO simply means non-governmental organizations. So non-governmental organization might be non-political as well, private, non-religious organization, it might be independent, formal, and things like that. So now we want to talk about this, the good governance for NGOs. Nonprofit organizations have different aims and objectives functioning, but they tend to share some characteristics. And this is the characteristics we're just talking about here. The formal structure, they are formalized and institutionalized to a certain extent and are therefore capable of entering into contractual relations for each non-governmental or non-profit organization. That is, there's going to be a formal structure. Then private, put it in mind too, that NGO is the private and not public. So the head, not to be chosen by any public administrative officials or figure. Non-profit, we have non-profit, disrespect the non-profit system of distribution of funds. That is, you will not fight for your pockets. You fight for the cost or the vision of the NGO. Independent, they are controlled either by the government 
nor by institutions than other than themselves. That is, it is independent, not government, you know, that institution. Voluntary, a certain amount of voluntary participation is present for both workers and board members. That is, you might be a board member, you might be a worker in an organization. So if it's a voluntary, that means you are there to work voluntary. Uh, voluntary means without financial reward. So number six here, we have non-religion. So if you say the organization is non-religious, that means it has nothing to do with any religion program or activities. So it is purely non-religion program. And if you say non-political, it has nothing to do with political, either political candidate, uh, policy of whatsoever. So it has nothing to do with it. We must put that in mind too. Then we talk about stages of development in non-profit organization. Stages. Number one, we have the structured, non-structured group. As we have said earlier, we have structured group with different, uh, with definite mission. Number three, we have the registered organization. We have professional organization. We have the organization with a balanced division of power. We have organization with a vertical end horizontal structure. So before we go to analysis of that, we want to quickly talk about types of NGOs, not governmental organizations. Firstly, here we have service provider. That is some organizations which are non-governmental are service providers. These organizations with activities like providing the healthcare services, family planning or educational services. So they are just service providers. And we have advocacy NGOs. All what they do is to create awareness, you know, various activities with the press, you know, events, activities, events, agitating for advocating for something. It might be human rights, it might be peace, whatsoever. So those. NGO is known as advocacy NGO. And we have some that are volunteer centers. What they do is to strengthen communities, make easier, you know, make it easier for people to enjoy other services because they are there to volunteer themselves in giving out and in working as well for the community they have. The community, sorry, the citizen initiative, we have some organizations too, non-governmental organizations, non-profit that are citizen in Sherry. What they do practically is self-help projects. That is within their community, within themselves, they contribute for to implement a project. It may be cash in terms of money, it may be tools to bring things together. It may be land to provide land for themselves materials, you know, labor, they come out to work. It may be road, construction of road. Maybe a road is bad in the community. Everybody come out to do something. We have citizen initiative programs, projects, and NGOs like that. Then we have resource centers. They connect nonprofit with the resources to improve management. That these are resource centers now that is, they connect whatever they have, non-profit, with the resources to improve management. What they have on ground, they still want more. So they put whatever they have together, bring maybe from the board, from the public, from the workers in the organization too. Then we have foundations. These are the uh, organization expected to fund some other organizations or support them help them to source for funding on their charitable uh, projects or purposes. That is, if you say your organization is a foundation, that means you are funding some other organizations for the implementation of their projects. So you must be mindful 
when you are submitting your name to the government for registration, you must be mindful of this word foundation. So they expect you to be funding some other organizations. Then we have community foundations. These foundations can include sport, women organization, neighborhood organizations, religious, educational, that is coming together in a community to form an organization for a particular purpose. It might be sport, as has been mentioned here. One street versus the other street, you know, things like that, women program and religious. <laughs> then we have umbrella organizations. These umbrella organizations are associations or related, you know, just a specific organization who work together formally to coordinate activities of, of pool resources for other organizations under the this service umbrella. So other organizations are coming under them and they work together and they pull resources down to them for implementation of their projects. We have religious charitable organizations. This include NGOs with uh, activities that has to do with religion. This is just pure religion activities. So more so we have dog wash sorry, watchdog organization. This is just a group that monitors the activities of the government, industry, and other organizations. Uh, make sure that uh, there's no unlawful activities. We call them watchdog organization. Then think tank organization. This organization sponsors research on some specific problems. What they do, is to put resources together, sponsor research on a particular problem and to discover a solution for such a problem. So we go back to, do not forget earlier we say the stage of stages of development in non-profit organizations. So these are just the analysis here. Number one, we have the non-structure organization around a charismatic leader. So what we mean here is that we have people that are just come together, persons, friends, they just share vision, mission, and they come together to form an organization. So at times, decision-making might be collective. Sometimes it might be autocratic. Somebody will just be dictating. And also, they'll, is also chaotic. That is, some, some people may not want to go for this. Some people might not want to support this. So this bring problem to such organization because there's no defined responsibilities. And that take us to a structured group, structured organization this time around. Oh, well, oh my dear. Okay, thank you. So for structures group, after a certain period of time, you know, the group realized that members need to be ascribed specific functions. That is, each person in the organization, in the board, must have his or her area of operation. That is, in a hierarchy now, authoritarian, you know, in the organization, there must be structure. That is, they should know what and what to do, who is in this charge, who is in this part, who is giving orders, who is working as a secretary. If we have that, that means the organization is structured. Unlike friends coming together, no leader, no secretary, no uh, public relation officers and all things like that. So when we talk about structure, each person must have a definite mission, a definite role to play in an organization, not to just pack everyone together. Then we go straight to a registered organization. You know, before you register your organization, there are some things you have to put into consideration. You ask yourself these questions. Why is the registration of this organization desirable? That is, why are we going to, do we need registering? Do we need to register our organization? You ask us a question. Then. 
If we are to register this organization, who is the founder? Who's going to be the head? There are questions. And if you are the founder, you must put this, to, am I going to, do I need to register it? Ask yourself questions. Then for whom will the organization be registered? Why are we ready for who? Is it for the children purpose? This is the thematic area now. Is it the healthcare? Is it the elderly? Is it the youth? Is it the gay child? Is, is it the children? Is it, the, uh, is it for peace? No, things like that. Then if you are settled with that, it will help you to know the service you are to provide. So your question is, do you want to uh, provide services? What are we going to provide? Then who are the decision making? Who are, going to, who are the people to make decisions? You know, then who are the ones to get the results? Making decision is quite different from results getting. So you ask questions before we register the organization. That is registered organizations. Put yourself together, ask questions if this organization works registration, because these are the challenges some organizations face. Don't mind you, this is NGO good governance. To govern your organization where well, you have to plan all this. Then the professional organization. After said and done, you know what to do with your organization. Then there's a need to go into professional agreement with few members that are ready to work. Then uh, NGO member pay attention to their education. That is, this is professional. They attend courses, schools, and seminar, and go on stories visits to ensure that their activities become more effective, more professional. So it will just be the same people, the same style, the same uh, orientation you have for truth. If you have uh, people that have been trained in you know, orientation courses, refresher courses, it make, makes more uh, professional. It brings more professional into the system. So in one way or the other, it makes the organization a professional organization because those that are working, the stars are professionals. Number five, I have organization with a balanced division of power, meaning that as a leader, you will not just be the one deciding, making decisions. We have board members. You might be the CEO, you might be the founder, you might be the president. We have board members, the principals of the division of power that has to be in place. We are talking about the legislative now, the consensual power, executive power, and judicial monitoring power should also be applied on. So there is an organization that is balanced in the vision of power as to have all these that they come together to decide on what to do in the organization in line with the code of conduct, code of ethics, with the guiding principles of the organization. So it will not just be only one person dictating that is autocratic now. Then this will take us to this, I'm trying to make it snappy. This will take us to having board is not sufficient, you know. You also need to ensure that it is working properly. If you gather your people now, having board members is not just enough. They must be active, activeness in the program. Here are some examples of problematic boards. I repeat, problematic boards that might cause more problem than the address. Now we have phantom board. This phantom board are boards when they meet twice, 
once or twice a year. And the, the kind of people that will come the first quarter of the year to meet are not the people that will come the second part of the year. So how would they agree on something tangible or important? Because the second part of the year, they are not, the people are not there in the first year. So why would they, how would they continue? We are the short. So we got them as fathom board. Then the research board <laughs> comprises of analysis. This type of board generally analyze problems without producing any specific solution. What they do is, uh, yes, they, we have this problem, we have this problem, we have this problem. They are not interested in solution of the problem. So some organization will look elsewhere, and standard bodies, experts to come and give the solution. Yet they will still complain one way or the other. It's not properly done. It's not this, it's not that we have some board members like that. Then we have staff board. Staff board is just the eminent members of an organization of the board that uh, even only their names in the letterhead paper, open doors, you know, heavy for people to know, yes, such a person is in an organization. But so many times, nobody, get back to them uh, to tell them that they have other important role to play, to look back to the organization. When it comes to projects, what are they supporting? When it comes to you know, activities, where are they to support us? So some organization just use their name to go to places, take letters here and there. We regard them in NGO management as Star board, right? there's nothing else they do. We just use their name and the letterhead here and there. Then we have directors, fan club. These are charismatic executive, executive director, especially people who founded the organization. They'll be running here and there, you know, live solely for it. That is, they want everything done perfectly. They compare people run here and there to get things done. We have type of uh, directors like that. They are also, we should know all this. And your organization, to be have organization, you should be able to pick yours now. Where do you belong here? Your board members, where do they belong? Then we have board with empty pockets. These boards are established because their members are able to obtain money for the organization. So they, they even board themselves. Because the members, people that are coming, you know, were able to generate funds for them. And most time, they even tax the members of the organization. Monthly, you are going to be contributing, contributing that. So there's the members bringing money. So those one we call them, board with empty pockets. Then we have board it here. This is just a small board that lack diversity with regard to the member of the number of the activities that must be coped with, meaning that they have much to do, maybe in their aims and objectives, but they lack diversity, have to get here and there, you know, to get this done. So we regard them as board here. Then we have the disordered board, disordered board. All these are full with conflicts and dubious activities and most of them are opportunists. They're just looking for opportunity. Yes, if you call them to be your body, they'll be happy. Not that they are interested in what they, you do. What they want is, uh, they want to use opportunity, make use of your organization to get things for themselves. And by so doing, you see conflict. Why are you doing this by fighting themselves? So we see them as disordered board. Then we have board, board, that is this category. Decisions are expected from the board members. No essential decision, that is, they're already board. Mm -hmm. They're just there. 
and we have others workers, even thinking working for them. So we regard them as board member, uh, board members. Yes. Then we have the two for the price of one board. What's the meaning of this? That is the leaders of organizations that carry out contracted services for the organizations in question. That is, they have their organization, but yet they are in other organizations as board members. The two for the price of one board. They have their organization, but because you have things in common, same goals, same objective, they may still be running in your organization as board members. We see them as two for the price one board. Then we have Rudy board. This is just board at least one vocal reader. Such people are in the majority. You have them. What do they want? What do they want to do? They are vocal. They are here and there. They want to do this. They want to do that. You see them in the majority. So we must identify all those boards we are talking about. If you are running an NGO, you should be able to identify. Then the B board, external appearance are all important. You see some that are not even board members coming around, you know, in one way or the other, in your organization, working with it, working the board level, some of them are not even appointed, but you see them active in one way or the other. So we have them too. Then they send the fugal board, the division of responsibility of the, and the attractive of new competence are fundamental characteristics of such a board. Decision of, division of responsibilities, that is the sheer responsibilities among themselves. They are all board members. In that board, we have the sheer person, we have the secretary, we have the PR, we have this in, among themselves and for the organizations. So, Please, are you with me? Yes, we hear you clearly. All right, All right. thank you so much. Sir. Then we the organization, hear. thank you. The organization with horizontal uh, or vertical structure. Here we talk about some organizations that maybe because of their modus operandi, the aims and objectives, the income or whatever challenge they might be facing and they wish to merge together with another organization. It might be a bigger organization. They want to merge together, but the such organizations must come to an agreement to provide solution. The number one of them is what we put here as the egalitarian model. The organization in the network receive the same share, regardless of input of their input or size. There is the lower size and the bigger size. If they come together, once they have come together, they must receive the same uh, size or input or whatever they have to do. It might be a project they put together. They must receive the same thing. Then we go to the model of proportional equality. All the entity involved contribute and receive the same amount in proportion to their size. That is, they contribute the same thing. When incomes come, they share it equally. Not that one take the lion's share, one take the uh, tortoise share. No, let them, if there's lion's share, let it be lion's share, lion's share. It's going to be uh, cow share, let it be cow share, cow share. So then the model for structural equilibrium, some organization receives more than they contribute and others less based upon an agreement concerning the 
appropriate long-term policy. So that is to some organizations, it depends on them, maybe the other organizations do not have enough to contribute. So they can still come to agreement and decide what they have to do, at least for the organization to move forward. We have combined model. For example, showing the minimum standard of the compass for all the, for all, why sharing out for the, the compress over all the above, the standard in proportion to input or the need of equilibrium. So here, they must understand that things have to be shared equally. And in case there's 40 somewhere, maybe the other organization could not contribute effectively, then they have to agree on what to do for the organization to move forward. Then that quickly take us to characteristics of good governance. All what we have said since, it is what categorized here. All what we have been saying since, it is what just categorized here as the characteristics of good governance. Number one, we have the rule of law. I told you earlier on, if you have to register your NGO, there are some things you have to put in place. It's still part of rule of law that your organizations must be registered. Even the United Nations, they have to deal with you or do anything with you. They have to ask you, is your organization registered? So it's still part of rule of law and some other things that NGO has to do. You must be able to do that. The judiciary system of your legislative system of your organization has to be functioning well. That's a regarding to the rule of law. That's number one in the good governance system. Then transparency. I told you, people, external must come and vet your account and there must be transparency even before you put it to the public. You have external auditor to do that. I'm just summarizing it here because it's part of all what we have said since. They're responsive. It must be responsive. The organization must be responsive. And this responsive goes a long way in an organization. Responsive to people, people that come around, information given to you, information expected from you, responsive to the community, the government. So you must be there always. Then uh, a quotable, as we have said, the organization coming together, all your staff, your people, you must see the equality and what to do with them sensor oriented so you are not just alone people want to evaluate you the government want to see what you are doing you have to censor you the accountable you must be able to like in nigeria here we have uh corporate affairs commission yearly they're expecting return from you so you must have accountable to them and even to the government they want to see what you are doing and that's why they say you should register in your local governments as well so you must be accountable to the government, to the general public, and also to the board of the organization if you are work at it. And the board have to at least be accountable to the general public and the government as well. Then effective and efficiency. Every organization must be effective. If they come to you, your office is locked today, tomorrow, next tomorrow, you are not effective and there's no efficiency. That is, there must be flow of activities, of programs that makes you effective. They're participatory. As you are here today, let me just put this straight. You are participating in this program. It's part of the participatory in programs, events, not only what you do or you present or you organized, even from other NGOs, from other organizations, for you participating with them in what they do, you know, you are promoting, propagating your organizations to the general public. So, summarily, so this is just the characteristics of good governance. I'm trying to make it very snappy. Then, to round it up, this is just the NGO networking. 
and you're getting connected to the right people and organizations in fundamental is fundamentally important. The connection will ultimately lead you to connection. NGOs, NGO funding agencies, philanthropists, consultants, corporations, and eventually uh, donors, you know, to successful achievement of your goals through this networking. Your, your NGO must practice the following. What are the following? And this is what we have here now. Number one is step out of your comfort zone. If you want to stay connected, step out of your comfort zone. So your program will not just be in your office. Some programs might be taken out maybe to the government door, online to the whole world, you know, in your community, in the streets. So let people know you. Why doing such? Some people will come ask, who are these people? What are they doing? So by that, you are making network to people, to other organizations, to philanthropies, because when they see you sharing some information online, they begin to ask, who is that person? Who is this organization? So what do they need? It's part of why you must step out from your comfort zone to get out to people. Then stay organized. If organization is not organized, as I've said earlier, then you will not get a good networking because everybody wants to network with a standard and well-organized organization. Then update, update your contacts. It might be your phone number, it might be your email, it might be your website. We have some organization that do even not, they do have a website, which is for how will people assess you. They don't even need to come to your office. Once they see your flight, they see your website, they just go straight there to see what you're doing. They don't need to come to your office. They don't need to ask questions. Any information they may want to ask is already there on the website. So you must update your contacts. That is one. There are the other contacts as well. That is your people, the people you have, your connection. You must be able to update them on your activities. Maybe you have a platform where you send messages to update your contacts on what you are doing. Then act professionally. Whatsoever you have to do, even if it might be a flyer for program, let it be a, a professional one, let it be a standard one. Your organization structure, uh, aims and objective things has to be carried out professionally. As we have said earlier on the professional organizations, that is, they have, they are, they are well structured. They know what they are doing. If a, a question is asked, they know what to say because they are uh, training their staff. So train yourself, ask, workshops for your stars, for your people. By so doing, you are professionalizing and you are empowering them to professionalize your organization. If you have any document to get, get it. With the government, get it. In your local government, get it. From other uh, partners, get it to make you a professional NGO. Then reciprocate, as we have said, like uh, the other time that says in this in this good governance that I talked about responsive. So here, let's advocate. If you have organizations that come together, come around for your program, try to tell them, thank you, appreciate them. It might be a test message, it might be a phone call. That is, you really appreciate what we have done so far. 
I think you are here with me. So it is good. Whatsoever people do to you, if you have people that organizations that come to your program, they might even come with uh, their polo t-shirt customized with the organization. Whenever you hear such organization having program too, you to go there is part of reciprocating what they have done to you. And by so doing, you are staying connected. You are networking with them. Next time they hear you have program, they'll be the first to be there. So that is part of what, what we must do to stay connected, uh, to make the network move or grow. Make the most of events. Do not say there's no money. There are other programs that can be done without much uh, pay or much money. You must always have program to do. If it's not two, two weeks, it can be monthly. Make sure you have events. If people are seeing your events, programs, every month, every week, every two, two weeks and all like that, you don't need to tell people who you are. They will even be the one to call you. We have not seen you this week. Are you not coming toward this area this week? Where are you going next week? Because of the impact you have made in the community or in the area you heard. So thank you so much for listening and for having me. My name is James Mercy of Batman. I am the founder of World Humanitarian Organization for Peace and Equity. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Ambassador James, did you want to share the uh, video you sent to me or not? Yes, so thank you. I want to share that. Okay, there's still people coming into the chat, so I'm gonna let them in. <clears throat> also, I'm gonna briefly share my screen so that for editing purposes, we'll be able to separate your presentation from the additional conversation that we have. Oh, there's also a hand raised. Now might be a good time for anyone that would like to comment to please put your comment in the chat or raise your hand. So before we go to the film, Pastor James, uh, you have several people that have indicated information in the chat. So I'll open it up to anyone that would like to proceed. Now is that time. Okay. Okay, if not, then I'll go to the video. Uh, Pastor James, people are still coming in, so I did make you co-host, so perhaps you can let them in if I don't see them. All right. Hello. Hello? Hello, we can hear you. We can hear you, Dr. Lawa. Please go ahead, please. We have some people that ask questions. Please ask them what the question is. Some people are raising their Hello? 
Hi. Hello. Hi. I have a question. All right, go ahead, please. Uh, good evening, everybody. I want to appreciate um, the presenter for that wonderful presentation. But my question is, in the process of um, coordinating the activities of an NGO, sometimes at the beginning of the, pro the exercise, you may have decided that this is the particular aspect you want to, you want to handle. Let's say the care for the aged. Maybe you are thinking about their health issues. And along the line, you find out that a lot of issues start cropping in. Say, for example, social factors, you know, homelessness, um, hunger, and things like that. How, do, how does um, the coordinators of a, an NGO limit the the NGO towards that particular area you intend to undo without deviating to other needs that do arise in the process of hand. Oh, Mary, please unmute yourself. <clears throat> I'm I'm yeah. unmuted. I muted you by mistake. So, Mary, please unmute yourself. Okay, what I'm saying is that sometimes when you start an NGO, let's say, let's give, uh, let's use our NGO, most, um, Mercy of God to the Aged Foundation. It is dealing with um, the aged. And you, let's say you decide that you want to handle the health aspect of the aged. You want to take care of their health and things like that. But along the line, you realize that a lot of issues are cropping in, maybe social factors, homelessness, hunger, poverty, and the likes. How can an NGO limit the activities to what you intend to do? Because all this will entail money, and you may not have the needed funds to carry out all those areas that are cropping in holistically when you want to do the when you want to handle the organizational activities do you understand surely madam okay that's my question thank you for that question my yes. advice for every ngo manager ceos president or whatever they might uh, be is that when registering your organization use a compound name that might cover some, uh, some activities to an extent. I will use uh, capacity building, for example. If you are registering your organization, I you say providing capacity building for this or that. Capacity building my, uh, it's it just a company, let me put it that way. So if you're having a workshop, if you're having some other activities might be in that capacity building, it can still be justified. If they say providing humanitarian services for the elderly and this like that, there are still activities that can still be under that humanitarian activities. So, so many times if you are registering or putting your aims and objectives together, <clears throat> we advise people to go for compound names so that we can be expanded later to uh, some extent. And according to your question, you know, NDO, let me say, you don't need to limit yourself, maybe because of the financial challenges of financial strength now, because opportunity might come tomorrow and people know that this is what you do and they want that home to be built for you. Will you now say that, no, 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 it's not part of your aims and objectives. No, we don't have the money. Then they are the one to fund the project. So that is why like the age ones you have just said, while registering, you should have think ahead. Now, what are the things we can even do for these age ones? The homeless among them, this, 
it will not be in the aims and objectives, providing homes, providing succor, providing this, that, and that for them. The homelessness should be what then, if you now see an opportunity of expanding, there's no problem about that. Just go back to the government that you want to uh, change the aims and objective, or you want to add to it, or you want to operate whatever you might want to say to them. So NGO cannot be limited. The point is just that you must have your thematic area. As you have just said, if the elderly ones, fine. If you are dealing with the children, anything that has to do with the children, you have to put that too. You might say gender-based, this and that. Look, think well, what are the things that goes together with that? Then you put it together. So I don't know if you really understand what I've just said, madam. Yes, yeah, I'm satisfied. Thank you very much. You are appreciated, sir. Another question, please. Yes, you have another hand raised, or at least you did. <clears throat> Perhaps not. <clears throat> if there are no other questions, I'll begin the video again. But if not, then please ask your question or put your question in the chat. Okay, I'm gonna begin the video again from the beginning. Just a moment, please. A well-governed organization Hello. is one that will be able to flourish. Good governance is about ensuring your organization is appropriately structured and has the right people, policies and procedures in place. It underpins every aspect of how your organization is run and is vital for your long-term success and sustainability. There are five common principles of good governance. 1. Structure Having a clear and appropriate governance structure, led by an appropriately constituted committee responsible for your long-term success, is key to good governance. This helps ensure the best decisions are made to drive your organization's success. 2. People Your organization aims to recruit and engage people with a diverse range of experience, skills, and backgrounds to take decisions that further your goals. Constructive and inclusive debate leads to good decision-making and helps create trust with internal and external partners. Three, communication. Effectively engaging with partners will help to shape your organization's governance and strategy. So being transparent and accountable is important. Transparency about what your organization's trying to do, how it's doing it, and with what results, empowers your partners by giving them the information they need. Four, standards and conduct. Your organization values high standards of integrity, promotes an ethical and inclusive culture, and engages in regular, effective evaluation to drive continuous improvement. Constantly seeking to improve helps you to quickly respond to new challenges and opportunities. Five, policies and procedures. Well-governed organizations will comply with all applicable laws and regulations, consider the social and environmental impact of decisions, undertake responsible financial strategic planning, and have appropriate controls and risk management procedures. As well as mitigating risk, this enhances the trust of your partners and boosts your organization's reputation. Find more about good governance and how to embed these five principles into your organization. Visit the Club Matters website and go to the governance section. Thank you. We now have several hands raised. 
So, uh, Doctor uh, Master James, I'll let you decide how you want to handle. It. And put, please put your your questions in the chat as well. But uh, Pastor James, how would you like to proceed? Well, in that case, uh, Fula Run Show. Lawal, your Hello, hand sir. is raised. Hello. Yes, go right and yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have a question. I don't know if Professor Aremu Rafi Walanre Waju is in the house. If my question goes thus What is the strategic approach? Is uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Ambassador James, if Professor Aremu is not in the house, maybe you can do justice to the question. What is the strategic approach to successful community community programs? Strategic approach, an NGO owner can okay. use to assess community programs. All right. Are you with me, sir? Thank you. Pastor I can hear you. But Pastor can you hear me too? Okay. Before you answer, yeah, Pastor yeah. James, uh, perhaps, All right, sir. perhaps we have several people with their hands raised. Perhaps uh, they could ask their questions and then you can answer them all at one time. Or they could put their questions in the chat so that we can move, move forward without taking up too much time. So, for example, um, I see uh, Stella has her hand raised. If you could just briefly state your question and then um, Pastor James will answer them at the same time. Thank you. And I see a question from Edwin saying he's on transit. Can he write your question? Yes, please put your question in the chat. That's the most effective way for us to move this forward. But in the meantime, Stella, do you have a question? If not, I'll turn it back to you, Pastor James. All right, why are we with uh, others' question? Your question, the moderator, Dr. Ambassador Fulon is a good one. How to the strategic plan for community programs event. Number one, nobody can just go down to the community and say he or she has a program, whatever your NGO is. There's something we call community assessment. You have to assess the community. So do they even need my service? This, what I do, do they need it? Because each NGO has its own uh, thematic area. Do they need this? So you assess the community, community assessment first. So after assessing the community, going to the uh, key orders of the community, knowing what is going on, go to the market, know what is going on. From there, that is the assessment. You have already assessed the community. It will now give you hope, understanding, strength of what to do in that community. And if they need not your services, then you dare not go there at all. If you assess their community assessment, then you go for community mobilization. How to mobilize the community to come out for your program. Because we have some people that have been to a community, people do not come out to them because they do not know what they're doing. So there must be community mobilization. And there's something called uh, com community advocacy. That is what you want to do, you must advocate for it advocate from what you do. And this is part of what uh, the humanitarians and the NGO orders learned in the Institute, Institute for Humanitarian Studies and Social Development. This is part of what we train them here in Lagos State too. Another program will be coming up this May, another program. When you have your proficiency certificate in NGO management, so it's part of what we train them. Before you go to any community, make sure 
you do the assessment, mobilization, you mobilize them, then advocacy on what you have to do in that community. So by so doing, it makes your job easier in such a community. Have I answered your question, Dr. Olawa? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, I'm grateful, sir. I can see some other people raising their hands. Juliet from, uh, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> yes, Juliet South from Africa. South Africa, from Soweto. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. That was an excellent presentation. Um, I learned a lot, and uh, a lot of the things that have been raised, they apply um, directly to, to us here in South Africa as well. Um, I also wanted to expand on the issue of, um, not expand, to, to ask, ask you to touch on the issue of community mobilization, because with a lot of the projects that we do, we go into communities um, and then people would say, oh, but now why are you not coming to this community? So we always have to find a way of answering because we normally work with the communities that we have a history with or communities that um, we have uh, people that we trust that have a relationship with that community. And then it helps us to also build a relationship with that particular community. But we are always uh, facing with a question from other communities, they say nearby communities where they're saying, oh, why not us? So we need to, if you can help us with a strategic way of actually responding to the communities that we still have to build relationships with without making them feel uh, marginalized because in all honesty, all projects can only happen um, few communities at a time. So I find that that has always been one of the challenges because people ask you with a lot of emotions and wanting to attack. So it's more of a communication and also strategic communication question. Thank you so much. And thank you, as I say, you are much appreciated your presentation. Uh, thank you, dear honorable from South Africa. Uh, I think because of you, our next program will try to organize the community mobilization for us to get it better. Uh, because there's no way you have to mobilize the community without getting to the key holders in the community. The traditional rulers, the religious, leaders in the community, they have their followers, they have their people that attend church, that attend the mosque daily, weekly, you know, the traditional ruler, the shifting in the community, you have to get in touch to them, tell them your motive, your program, what we have to do. Some of them might even be the one to give you the space you are to use. Some of them might even be the one to produce some of the, uh, to support with some other equipment you have to use in that community because they, know that what you are coming with is the good one that will be useful to their community. So the key orders in the community, we have to get to them if we have to mobilize anyone from the community. Then you try to bring one or two or more to your organization. Before you launch anything, then you, you know, bring some of them around, educate them on what you have to do, give them materials of your organization, let them even announce it, make advocacy before you come around. One way or the other, they are part of your members. So when you get there, even if they do not recognize you or feel not to appreciate you, seeing there are people among you, they will feel comfortable to you know, be with you, do support whatsoever you have to do. Uh, I think it's part of what we have to put into consideration before we move out to community mobilization, because they would like to know what you have come to do, and they would like to see their people around you. So thank you. But next time, we are going to do more about community mobilization. So I can see you, sir, uh, Mr. Kintsunde, please. Well, thank you on my part. My questions go, my questions go this way. How will an NGO generate money when members are not paid regularly, uh, especially their monthly dues? That's my question. Can you hear me? All right, sir. Yes, very well, clearly. Yes. 
My okay. question is go this way. So it depends. It I depends said, on your. How will an NGO generate sir? money? Why? How will an NGO generate money? Why the members are not paying their monthly dues regularly? That's my question. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Sir. I can hear you, sir. But can you hear me too now, sir? Yes, I can hear you. All right. Thank you, sir. Number one, there are different types of organizations that I've just said earlier on. Okay. If we have membership organization, like that membership organization, you can tell them they have to pay for membership, either yearly, quarterly, or whatsoever. That is membership organization. But as a voluntary organization, non-profit, members are not expected to pay anything. You even be the one you know, supporting them with materials. If they have to go with polo, they have to go with daughter, they have to go with pen, whatever they have to use, you'll be the one, the organization will be the one to provide it because it is voluntary organization because you are not paying them. So you don't expect them to start giving money while you are not paying them. It's quite different from membership organization. Like some institution now, we have them to pay membership in that institution. You know, either yearly to renew their license, to renew whatsoever, that is membership. But a voluntary, when you are not paying your staff, they are coming to assist you voluntary. They are not expected to pay you any dime. You will be the one to provide the materials for them if you want them to work. Are you with me, sir? But okay. to generate money. I'm listening, I'm listening. Time. To generate money is another thing entirely. The other ways to go about generating money, when it comes to, we might okay. have programs. We might have programs. Okay. Where we want people to come. Okay. They pay before they have access to it. I went to MIT, okay, okay. a workshop. We want to train people Talk on right. catering, right. on making, on this. So you have to pay maybe one more thousand naira for certificates or for this material or whatsoever. So like that, we can generate money. The organization okay. can do a material that has to be sold for people to generate okay. money for the organization. Some uh, organization can do fundraising. It might be street fundraising. All right. Your polo, take some things, go right. along the streets, you know, advocate for the stick so they can contribute to support. You might go on social media. We are having social -so projects, please. We need your support. Join us, uh, support all this, okay. so that we can generate money, make advocacy of what you do, let them support you. But that membership is an organization that has to do with membership. So deals has to do with organizations right. that have agreed to be doing such and not all or every organization does that. So thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Thank you Hello. very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hello, good evening. I can hear you, madam. Good evening, Hello. madam. Yeah, I'm sorry, I ran and over here. So the network is just going up and down. Can you hear me? I can hear you clearly, ma'am. Okay. So my name is uh, Mrs. Victoria Alonu Tegbe, and uh, I belong to right. the Tadmont Administrator's Healthcare Initiative. We are a professional organization and well structured. And uh, as I wrote in that uh, note chat, that uh, we have actually been taking part of our meager salary to fund our activities. We empowered so many people, we are going to schools, have gone to the elderly, we have even registered with some uh, bodies. But then, I think you even mentioned that even in your registration, there are, there are places where we pay our dues for registration in such organizations. But then, because we are retired and we have a lot of activities, we are empowering people, I'm just looking at how can we source for funds that can assist us in actualizing all these our activities better. All right. Can you so hear me question. now, madam? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Can you hear me, madam? All yes, right. I can. I can, yes. Yes, thank you. There are better ways of uh, 
generating funds for organizations. But the pro problem we have is that some organizations have misused these opportunities. Grants shouldn't be a problem. But who are we to be trusted? That's the issue on grant. That's the issue. And uh, let me just answer your question straight. Yeah. There are philanthropists, there are organizations that are and foundations that are ready to fund programs like that. Okay. Thanks without number they are on internet. But what they just need from you is your documentation to know that you are genuine. Your website, okay. your contact addresses, whatsoever you have done for years back. They want to see the video, they want to see the picture, they want to see the project you have done before. And they want to okay. see the outcome, the implementation. So things like that, if you get them ready and you have your good uh, networking, that's the purpose of networking. People might say, and uh, I don't know might say, he wants this in Africa. So they begin to look for organization in Africa that are into such program, such thematic area, especially, uh, uh, for example, for elderly, okay, we're into elderly. So that is why the organization too must be well defined as is thematic area. Thematic area is a specialized area. So once we have that, they can easily connect you with those donors that may want to fund such program. Sending down uh, hospital equipment, health care equipment, things like that. We have it done, but okay. they want to identify or work with a standard organization. So that is the most challenge some people are facing okay. and not uh, a mushroom organization. Okay. okay, thank you. Hello? Yes. Hello? Uh, yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yes, I, said, I, I said thank you. All right, ma'am, thank you so much. Then we, that that means coming. that we can, well, after this uh, program, we can still liaise with you in case we have some questions. Of course, that's why I dropped my contact on the on the board chart so we can discuss later. Okay. Because uh, okay. some organization comes, then we consult for. And okay, thank that's, you fine. So that's fine. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, uh, this is Dr. Remio Lutimo, the Secretary General, United Nations from Nigeria. You're welcome, sir. Yeah, sir. Uh, your presentation was well educative, in fact, um, and your explanation to all race questions uh, is where is even fall between uh, between the SDG of the United Nations. So uh, to the last question, I just want to chip in that most reason why even United Nations are not so, uh, supporting or giving grants is because of the motives by most of the NGO. Most of okay. them are not well written. They are not well explained. You understand? And uh, most of the time in the past, they normally grant, um, in fact, they even give you, if you are coming for their programs, they send money in advance, but today it's not been so. But many people have abused it. NGO has been used for money laundering and all that. So if you are coming with your own NGO, it must be well written. Your activity okay. must be spelled out. And then uh, what are the benefits? And if they want to make some survey, would they find it like that, the way you have put it on the website? Not that you just put some activities for instance, there's one NGO we wanted to assist in Oyo State, only for us to see that the NGO, there's no even NGO, registered NGO. The owner of the NGO that says she has NGO, she only goes to all these homeless and everything and take picture there and then post it. Ah. Mm. And then they gave her a grant. And then, you know, those people she took around were in trouble. You know, mm. it was a real 
mess, I have to back out because okay. I was using the United Nations today. So most NGOs and multi, some of them just a means to an end. Some don't even have the humanitarian mindset. Mm. So when you are coming to NGO, you must have mm. all these principles. You must, you must have the mindset to help the people. Wherever your target groups are, you must have the mindset first for them, not the grant or what is coming, because it will come if you are really doing it in accordance to the, the lay down rules. There's uh, 17 SDG, and in, I'm the chairman of uh, SDG for IP Governing Council in Atlanta, Georgia. I was just being appointed. But I want to tell you that we have 17 SDG of the United Nations that they are looking critically to uh, achieve before 2030. But the problem is that where are the people, where are the NGOs? So is funding is not the issue. The issue is what are you doing? What is your motif? Uh, what is the, uh, this thing bring behind you setting up that NGO? So I think this needs to be addressed very well. And then the grants will not be easy. I have uh, this, uh, there, there's some NGO, even in Canada, uh, Canada, yes, US that are looking for NGOs in Africa, in Nigeria, everywhere to sponsor. But the issue is that they are not seeing what they are expecting, you know? When you come to the NGO, they say they are just running NGO, we are just doing it, and we are this day, and we come up with some don't even have websites, some zoning social media. You know, your website really speaks about you. It tells them what you really are. Tell them that your mission, your objectives, your core yeah. values, all these things will be well spelled out. So funding, you no, know, anything, even you can generate funding anywhere. For instance, and like I said, you can, in the community, you see people coming. If your uh, foundation is beneficial to the society, the society will yeah. come and give into it. You know that? The society, okay. in fact, someone from the society will raise up and say, I want to be part of the NGO and I want to be a financier of it to make sure that this thing go along to what you're doing. So all those okay. things, and um, I'm so happy about the, uh, the speaker the founder okay. and he really, really, really dealt with it. I, I, I hope he can make that thing available so people can go through it and apply it to whatever they are doing or setting up. And um, money grants should be the last thing in their mind, but the impartation should be the first thing. I always believe in something. I say I always say that the the people first, the company, the organization second, and you last. So if you can have this three thing that you're doing, that whatever you're doing, the service to humanity, service to whatever you do, is something that will live after you, is a legacy, then you are going to establish a kind of institute before you leave. So that is my tip. Thank you for okay, uh, giving me this. Lutimo, let me just appreciate you very much for that. And uh, yes, sincerely, I know a lot of NGOs must have abused uh, opportunities given to them. And so that makes yes, it sir. difficult for you to actually, to actually identify the ones that are serious with good good motive. But then yes. I can tell you maybe after this um, after this um, uh, discussion, uh, we, are, we also need to have your number to discuss with you because we have been in existence. We are serious minded. But I don't need to start talking about so that I don't waste other people's time. But then uh, okay. at times when you see. Uh, some activities that you have done. Maybe you just need to find some, some areas in the way of your website so that they will see all the activities you've done, the lives you have impacted without actually looking for anything in return from them. Then they know that you are a serious minded group of people. You understand, sir? Yes, sir. That is actually. Yeah, so after this, I, I, I know um, uh, Mr. James said he has his number on the, on the platform. I will check his number, and I know my own number too is available. Then I can also speak with Dr. Lutimo. Then we can take it from there for, you know, as regards my own um, NGO. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Pastor James. Pastor James. Sir, I'm here. I'm here. 
yeah, there are several hands raised, but I would like to uh, show a brief video if I could before we proceed. And then I'd like to make a comment if All I right. may. Thank you. All right, go ahead, please. Oh, <laughs> go ahead, my friend. And if you're not speaking, if you could mute, please mute yourself, I would appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Sorry, my question was not attended to. Uh, please wait for your question until after the video. Thank you. As a human family, we've had an enormous wake-up call to how connected we are with a tiny little virus that comes along and shuts us down. We all live in this world together. The same blood flows in me and every any other person. We are facing the challenges of an ecosystem that is stressed. Things are not moving as fast as they should. Things are improving, but not as fast as they should. The challenges that we are facing, they are materializing so fast that it's not only my children or grandchildren which will experience the consequences if we fail. To do it, we need to do it together. Collaboration, north, south, east, west, you know, black, brown, white, strength in the diversity of the human family is what we need right now to get us past this incredibly difficult time. Might sound like it's impossible, but you know, that's what we work towards, making the um, impossible possible. 20 years ago, a small group of United Nations and business leaders came up with a visionary proposal. I propose that you, the business leaders here gathered in Davos, and we, the United Nations, initiate a global compact of shared values and principles which will give a human face to the global market. I always say part of Kofi Annan's genius was he invited business, but he also addressed civil society and labor organizations. The mission of the United Nations Global Compact is to mobilize companies around the world to align their operations and strategies with 10 universal principles in the areas of human rights, labor, environment, and anti-corruption. The UN represents the body that is to drive international cooperation and drive peace and security for humanity. And I think it unifies all of society around this set of 17 goals. Our objectives uh, cannot be met if the private sector doesn't play an, a fundamental role. And so the Global Compact is a, a platform in which all those uh, businesses that abide by the principles of, uh, and values of the United Nations and of the Charter uh, to work together representing uh, the best of humankind. For the last two decades, the initiative has grown to encompass local networks in more than 60 countries, engaging directly with over 10,000 companies. The local networks are our global footprint around the world, and they work with us to translate the 10 principles as well as the sustainable development goals into actionable pieces of work for businesses globally. It is so decided. Since 2015, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Climate Agreement have provided the most powerful common agenda that the world has ever seen with an essential role spelled out for business. L'accord de Paris pour le climat est accepté. Any business that continues to operate under its own self-interest will not be around very long. So businesses that have a strong purpose, that understand how they can make society better, will be embraced by society and will be around for a long time. 
be the change that you want to see in business. I truly believe that companies who do not put sustainability, the SDGs, in their strategies, they're going to disappear. The mindset of consumers has changed. They increasingly want to buy from companies that are contributing to society as a whole. Business must be part of the solution in when we address these big global problems. The focus has shifted to both the short term and the long term, both doing well and doing good, making profits and making a change. This is a reality of the world now. Leaders need to lead sustainably. The United Nations Global Compact is leading the transformation ahead, challenging companies to take more ambitious action on the sustainable development goals. I think it's absolutely impossible to face the challenges of today, the very quick change uh, that is happening without having the youth uh, leading the way and helping us define uh, the right policies, the right policies, the right approaches to address uh, the, the global problems. The world is waking up and change is coming whether you like it or not. The world today has got more opportunities than it has the challenges um, that can be overcome by the opportunities that we have. You find people in the most desperate of situations determined to fight for a better future. That's the kind of world I want. What has changed in a very short period of time is that the narrative is different, and that is fantastic. If you want to have a good business, you have to mobilize people. A business is a sum of people working to something. More and more people realize that sustainability is really about making the pie bigger, better, and more inclusive. I hope in the future, all businesses in the world will think about their own purpose. Business can only exist when they have a purpose. We've got to show progress. We've got to reverse what's happening. I see the Global Compact as an incredible organization working together with businesses to build a more sustainable world. We are united across the globe for the globe. We're united despite our challenges, no matter how daunting the task may seem. We are united by possibilities because this is bigger than one business, because we are better together. We all have the same job. We are united in the business of a better world. Thank you for allow allowing me to share that. One of the reasons <clears throat> I wanted to share that with you is because today's topic deals with governance. And it is, in fact, the United Nations Global Compact that was founded by Kofi Annan in 2000 alongside the Millennium Development Goals that is driving now the largest worldwide organization focused on corporate social responsibility. Whatever you heard in that video about videos, it applies to non-governmental organizations as well. But in particular, you're in a unique position, particularly those of you in Nigeria. As of right now, the CEO of United Nations Global Compact is the woman that you saw there, Senda Ojiambo from Kenya. She has now stepped in as the Assistant General Secretary of the organization. The United Nations Global Compact started out with just 40 com companies in 2000. Now there are over 13,000 major corporations. They have made commitments to address four key topics. One, human rights. Two, labor. Three, the environment. And four, anti-corruption and transparency. This deals specifically with governance as at one time, as I mentioned, this was the corporate social responsibility group. Now, as of 2015, the language has changed and non-governmental organizations have to change with it. Now the focus is ESG, environment, society, and governance. So what I would ask each of you and urge you to do is to align yourself 
with existing organizations that have resources for you to take advantage of. So you do not have to reinvent the wheel. There's already an existing blueprint. You and Nigeria are even more favored because they are launching this year the first of five hubs of the African continent in Nigeria, in Abuja. And the intent is to have the top 100 companies in each of the 55 African countries to join the United Nations Global Compact and to add by a factor of 10 their small and medium enterprises and civil society. So I would urge each of you to consider this could be your opportunity to get the tools and resources to align yourself with the language that's being used on a global basis and to get the assistance from your own local community by binding together to share this information. Those of you who do not know me, I am Andrew Williams Jr. And I have been in a placeholder role with the World Humanitarian Organization for Peace and Equity for quite some time. However, today I requested Dr. from Chapter James to appoint me to instead appoint me as a goodwill ambassador so I can uplift the work that you're doing worldwide without there being a conflict of interest with my involvement with other organizations that we're aligned to. In the chat, I've already put the link to this replay so that you can share it with anyone. And you can also click the link to review the material we had. I also put a link to the presentation that you heard and also put a link to the YouTube video that showed good governance. So I would ask uh, Pastor James, for those people that put their contact information in the chat, for us to do a follow-up so that you can all ask any questions you have and we can move forward, not just now, but now on. As you know, this is, of course, the decade of action to deliver the SDGs, but climate chaos, the hunger pandemic, and other emergencies worldwide are affecting us all. So I just recommend that we all align ourselves together and I commit myself to assisting you to accomplish that in whatever way I can. Thank you very much, Pastor James. The floor is back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Andrew, for what you always do, bringing us together and bringing us on board. Yes, let me quickly make this announcement, please, for every one of us that are just here to stay connected and to know more about what is really Ines and Ambassador Andrew have just said. There's a link we have put there to join for your certificate. And as well, there we share more ideas, experience, and links on the registration or uh, to know more about the United Nations Global Compact. So please just join that link. It's a WhatsApp link. We have just shared that. Join that so we're able to talk more about this development that Honorable Andrew have just mentioned. So thank you so much. And if you have your question, we may answer more there. But there was a sister that was trying to ask a question uh, before Ambassador Andrew was playing the video. Yeah. Thank you, Ambassador James. Good evening once again. My name is Shula Ketty. I asked the question, I put it on the chat. That was the, where do you put or draw the line between your NGO, your mission, vision, and possible the philosophy of your NGO and the existence of the government or the administration, so to say. For instance, majority of these uh, politicians or, pol or political office holders, when you introduce to them on what you are doing, Say, for instance, uh, the area of AJ, for instance, you introduce it to them that this is what I'm doing. And for sure, they don't have the vision, but they love what you are doing in order to promote their own office. Some of them promise to, to support financially and otherwise. And some of their support does not even measure up to the expectations, whichever. But they clamor that they are the ones doing this forgetting that somebody has the vision. So I need to know, where do you draw the line 
Here you have an NGO that needed to be funded and you have seen them as the partner, so to say. But fortunately, they would like to use this for their own, for their own selfish whatever, to promote their office. Kindly put a light, I mean, more light on this, on how we can draw the line. Thank you. Over. So, oh, thank you so much for this uh, question, uh, Madam Shola Aketi. Thank you. Uh, really appreciate this. Uh, number one, you know, when it comes to politics, they don't even, even act all the time. They act when uh, election is approaching for people to know them. I think if you want to get them rightly, get the money you want from them, the politician, it is then you approach them to tell them your program. Then you can promote them, people will vote for them. That is all they need, that people can vote for them. So they are ready to give you money. They are ready to tell you to mobilize your people, share things in their name, put their picture in your banner or in your polo t-shirt, share it, let people make noise about them. That's what they have. And what you need from them is your money. But the bottom line you are now talking about, let me just put it straight. You cannot separate your organization from money. You are going to them because you need your money. And you are not to put them in your board of trustee or board for anything because that has made your board to be a political or your organization to be a political organization. The other organizations will be seeing your NGO as a as a political organization. They will come closer or wish to help you, meaning that you can just take a proposal to them to support you. If they did that, fine. If they do not do, fine. You have some other people to meet. If they are politicians, you have some other people in the other parties to meet. You have government to meet. So all you need from them is the money. The bottom, uh, the bottom line, the line is already there. What uh, take you to them is the money you want to get from them to fund your project, your program. And once you get it or you do not get it, you re re retrieve back, construct it on some other things to be done. That is politics for you. They want you to promote them. After that, they leave you, they abandon you. They don't want to hear anything. Again. Even the government at times, if they want to achieve something from your project. And at times, if you take your proposal to the government, so many times before you know it, government will start doing what you took to them as a proposal. They start operating on it without your knowledge, without your uh, idea, uh, without your concept. And before you know it, they set uh, department or organization office for that. So that's why you have to be careful to whatever you take to them or you take to those politicians as well. Let me chip, quickly chip in this. There was a grant that came up and we have to submit the grant with the uh, government officials letter ahead. A senator must sign. We begin to look for a senator that will sign. And from there, you begin to hear that you have to pay this, you have to pay that before they could sign the document for you, before so even the money he has to collect is greater than the money you are expecting from the donor. So what do you do? You have to retrieve back because you are going there for you to get funds. So Madam, the bottom line, the drawn line is there already. If you are crossing it to get money, you retrieve back to your organization to do whatever you have to do. So that does my candid advice on that. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Ambassador James. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> There's another hand raised, but in the chat, I also put a link online to a, a document you can download. It's called, <clears throat> excuse me, Business Planning for Enduring Social Change. I also put the link to the organization is called Root Cause. They're at rootcause.org. They provide a business plan guideline for nonprofits to function and address many of the issues that you brought up here today. Uh, this is an important document because the, co 
founder, Andrew Wolk, in 2009, he actually championed an initiative by Michelle Obama here in the United States, where they identified those organizations and nonprofits that were successfully accomplishing their missions, and they routed funding success to those that had a proven track record of accomplishing their goals and objectives. So the first responsibility is for us to make sure we have our I's got it and T's crossed. <clears throat> so again, in the chat, I put a link. So that may provide some guidance and assistance. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Ambassador Andrew. Please, any other question before we move ahead, please? All right, over to you, the moderator. Ambassador Lawa, please, there's other announcements. Ambassador Lawa, is she here with us? Please, I expect you all to join that link on WhatsApp, we we'll are able to communicate more there and all, some of these links will be sent there to us. Ambassador Lawa, it's over to you. Any other announcement, please? Hello, can you hear me? House? Yes, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me, House? Yes, yes go ahead. Can. Hello? Yes, yes, yes. Hello, yes. Yes, thank you very much. I want to appreciate everyone for their contributions. I want to appreciate Dr. Ambassador James. I want to appreciate Honorable Andrew Williams. I thank you, sir, for all your contributions and um, for hosting us. And um, I also want to make collect an impression, an impression about the deals before we come to the closing remark. In the constitution given to us by the CAC. Are we together? Yes, go ahead. Hello? Yes. Hello. The, 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 constitution given, the constitution given to us by CAC, we were asked to, that we can collect, uh, collect dues from each member on a monthly basis. It is clearly written in black and white that this deal we can use to run the organization programs. So, and that was the reason for that question. And we read it together, we, we had a meeting and we discussed about it. So, and it was from the CAC. So that is the impression I just want to correct, sir. And for the closing remark, because time is not on our side, I want to. Um, Please let, let me quickly say something on that. All right. Um, Dr. Folorisho Lawa. Yes, sir. Let me quickly say something on that. Okay. Not the document with you, not everybody has that. So you won't say CAC is giving you authorization to collect money from people monthly or deals. You are the one to submit your, uh, how will you put it? Your principles, you know, to them, your documents to them, what you intend doing. And they are not the one to give it to you. If you have 
if they have given you anything, that means what you submitted to them that is being viewed, uh, passed, and sent back to you. Do you get it? Maybe it is your lawyer that do no, that. So I, CAC, I will never tell you. CAC will never tell you to collect deals from people. It depends yes, on your I don't know if you understand um, me. Okay. James, for that, the let us go to the closing remark for for today. Let our ambassador and with the closing remark. Because our time is fast spent and the uh, so thank you. Ambassador Andrew, sir. Oh yes, I'm here. I apologize. Yes, sir. Lisa, Lisa, give us the closing remarks, sir. We appreciate oh, well. you, sir. Oh well, <clears throat> I would just want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, just to let you know, <clears throat> we are sharing this, as I said, on the Woke Facebook page, but also on the Ayakpa Network page on Facebook. We're providing a global platform for these conversations around the world throughout the year. So we look forward to supporting your efforts with the World Humanitarian Organization for Peace and Equity. I've been involved with uh, Patrick James for several years. I look forward to working with him for the rest of this year and beyond. But please check the inbox. If you add a computer, save the chat. And if you have the opportunity, you can also click the link in the chat to get the presentation that was made today. Just for your information, Pastor James, while we were talking, I did upload that to SlideShare and I did put the link there. So anyone that has an interest in the presentation that Pastor James made can access it from there and download it. And in the WhatsApp group, we'll also put the links there. So thank you very much. I'll turn it back over to you, Pastor James. I'll put a few more links into the chat. Then I'm going to put up the initial screen we shared. And then I'm going to open up the entire gallery so that anyone that wants to wave goodbye to the audience, you can. But now's the time to put your contact information in the chat. So I'll give us another two minutes to do those things. Back to you, Pastor James. Thank you, sir. All right, so much. Uh, he's saying that we individually you can drop your contacts in the chat there. It, the networking starts from here. That's how you network. We have people from South Africa, we are from Syria alone on the platform, we are from other countries, we are from US. So it is part of networking. Please don't drop your contacts, your name, your NGO, your position, your email, and your phone number, please just drop it there for others to connect with you. The most so on Sunday, WOP is having a program, which is the Workers Day celebration. We are celebrating the Earth Workers Day on Sunday by 4 p.m. So we are going to share that with us. It's going to be online too, online program. So you are all invited. So, your network connection is very bad. Can you repeat that, please? Say something about it. Can you hear me? No, we heard nothing. Put your information in the chat, please. And Pastor James, I'm going to uh, stop sharing now and open up the gallery so we can have the networking portion. We have an hour if you choose for the networking session. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
I still see some hand raised. Ahmed, Ahmed, if you can unmute yourself, your hand is raised if you have a comment to make. Thank you, sir, for the presentation. We really enjoy it. I think we need to go further on proposal writing, sir. I'm recommending it. Do you hear me? Hello? We hear, we hear a lot of static. If you have a computer, please type in your information into the chat. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We just spoke about proposal writing, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, it's a good one. It's a good, uh, it's another topic. In, in and then we are having humanitarian program. Next is not for all the NGO managers. You, that will be announced to you. The advocacy, community advocacy, community names, community assessment, uh, dynamism in humanitarianism, NGO management, fundraising, proposal writing, concept notes, all these things will be taught. So I will, we still have to share the link for that too. And it's going to be visible class in Lagos. So you have to learn more of that. So thank you. Again, this is a networking networking session. <clears throat> Unless, if, however, if there is no networking, we can close. So either we talk or we leave. Now's that time. Make the decision. Um. Okay. Let me raise my hand. Go. Okay. <laughs> um. Yes. Hi. Good evening. Uh, it's um. It's, it's, it's good to be here. It's been a long day in South Africa because we're celebrating um, our Freedom Day. So there's been a lot of activities and I'm glad that I, I was able to connect and join this, uh, this session, which I think is very, very important. Um, not I think, I believe it is. And I, I find that the issues that were raised today um, um, are, are critical in making sure that we all assess ourselves as people who lead and direct organizations. And one of the things that was said here about um, everything starting with the community and then um, the organization, and then I even think it should be maybe yourself because if you're really not a humanitarian, if you're not there about people, um, you should not actually be in the space. But um, as, um, uh, Prince Andrew would know that some of the challenges that come with that is that people tend to get involved. They identify with the work you do, but they only want to get involved when, uh, when they see that there could be money coming in. And then what it does, it, dis it takes away capacity from the organization. Um, even when we are still looking for funds, I mean, I, I'm one of those people who's always started with the people yet you find that there's some administrative areas that get short in terms of our website, though the work is there. Um, so it's a challenging space and it's good to know that every now and then we get reminded of um, the solutions that are there. And uh, this has, has been good and it's been one of the most practical and pragmatic sessions I've attended, you know, uh, because at times you, you think the problem is just you. Um, and the reality is people out there, they want to get involved for money. And when they don't see any money, they leave. And it leaves you as a visionary almost on your own. But you keep going, you keep going. So this is very encouraging um, that we have to keep going and then start looking for the funds. But people's lives have to be changed on a daily basis. We have to make impact um, as, as much as possible. That's what I believe. And thank you, Prince Andrew. Thank you, um, Ambassador James and the speaker and everyone who's contributed. Thank you. This is Juliet Miyabo. Um, I'm part of um, the Soetu CSI Council um, in South Africa. And I work closely with uh, Prince Andrew in, in developing various areas in the area of um, AIGBA TV and internet networks. 
Thank you. Back to you, Pastor James. Yeah, I think we are done. Thank you everyone for joining us in this program and training. So we'll be announcing to you next time when we'll be having that training. But on Sunday, we are having uh, the healthcare program on Sunday, celebration of workers and that we are celebrating the healthcare workers. So you are all invited. So thank you for joining us in this program. Honorable Ambassador Andrew Williams Jr., thank you so much. You've always been there for us. I appreciate you. And the organizer of the program, Dr. Lawa. Lawa. So thank you. Another patriots that are here with us. So thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well done. Thank you.